The Goat House is back with every NFL prediction you need right here, right now, just before the season's about to kick off. From division winners to Super Bowl winner, all the major awards, and then some more interesting takes. Let's get started. My eight NFL division winners for the season. AFC East, a battle between the Jets, the Bills, the Dolphins. I actually had the Bills. The Milano injury makes that much of a difference for me, even though it's going to be a battle. I'm going to go with the Jets. Love the beginning part of their schedule. I think they have a realistic shot to start around 7-1. and one, And they also have a very, very complete roster if it's healthy. The NFC East, it's between the Cowboys and the Eagles. Going to go with the Eagles this year. The roster looks like a juggernaut on paper. The question is, do they play like it on the field? AFC North. I'm going to go Bengals, even though the Ravens or even the Browns could win it. Tough to go against the Ravens. I actually think the Bengals have one of the easier schedules in all of football. They have that last place AFC North schedule. I mean, they're also super talented if they are healthy on both sides of the ball. For the NFC North, I'm going to go with the Packers. 50-50 between the Packers and the Lions, both top-tier teams in the NFC. The Packers, the improvement they showed last year, and they continue on that path this year but it should be a battle over there in the NFC North. The AFC South, I'm pretty confident with the Texans, but at the same time, I think people are sleeping a little bit on the Jaguars and they can kind of get back on track. They have the talent, of course, on both sides, but I like the Houston Texans for the AFC South. And then for the NFC South, this one I'm very, very confident with. Going to go with the Atlanta Falcons. The only thing is, you know, chemistry. Is it all going to click in year one? But the talent is definitely there. One of the more complete rosters in football, and I do like their schedule. For the AFC West, I'm going to go with the Chiefs, obviously. Another one I'm extremely confident about. Don't really have, uh, didn't really consider anyone else. And then the NFC West, going to go with the 49ers, you know, Rams, Seahawks, maybe even the Cardinals could be a little sneaky, but pretty confident with one of the better rosters in football in the San Francisco 49ers. My AFC champion, the Kansas City Chiefs going back to the Super Bowl, going for that three-peat. I have them beating the Houston Texans in the AFC Championship game. My NFC champion is going to be the Green Bay Packers. I have them beating the San Francisco 49ers, like where they ended things last year. Got them going to the Super Bowl. My Super Bowl matchup, the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Green Bay Packers, and I went a little bold this year, went with my gut. My gut is telling me the Green Bay Packers win the Super Bowl. Love the upside of this team, love the progression last year, and it shows that they can become even scarier of a team this year, led by Jordan Love. But they have a complete team, more of a complete team than people realize. The offensive line is there. They have a bunch of different weapons, a receiver and tight end. They add Josh Jacobs. The defense has always been super talented on paper, and they showed it sometimes on on game day. I think we get more of that this year. They play up to their potential under new defense coordinator Jeff Halfley. I think Matt LaFleur is one of the very best coaches in football as well. Feeling the Packers for the Super Bowl this year. And now for the team that I think will get the first overall pick in the NFL draft. So maybe something you don't want to be, or maybe you do. Maybe you want the first overall pick, but I'm going to go with the New England Patriots. If they were starting Drake May, they would not be my pick because I think he would do some damage, even though he would have some, some rookie struggles, some hiccups, of course, but uh, they're worse with Jacoby Brissett in there, and we even saw it in preseason. They just had nothing going with that offense. That offense is still very much a work in progress, and that's why I'm kind of okay with sitting Drake May because he is an upside guy. You don't want to disrupt that. But and you know, even if Brissett starts all year, maybe they don't get the first throw. Maybe they're not the worst team in football because the defense still should be pretty solid. Uh, but I do think there's a chance they have the worst offense in the league. I'll go with them going, getting the first overall pick, but that was a tough call. Some some teams to uh, choose from there. How about the surprise team of the year? A team that ends up being a little bit better than expected. Going to go with the Tennessee Titans, actually. I, I thought about the Seattle Seahawks. Another good option for this, but Tennessee just keeps adding that defense. It should be very well coached under Denard Wilson, but they're, they're loaded with talent. Uh, they're going to be tough to deal with. They're going to blitz. They can get pressure in different ways. I think it starts up front, stopping the run with Jeffrey Simmons and Tavondre Sweat, but they've added so much to the secondary. Uh, I think they'll be well coached on offense. They, they have so many playmakers. It's really on the offense line and mainly Will Levis. That's really all it's on because I like the coaching staff and I like the talent. People view them as a bottom-tier team. They have the chance to be a lot better than that, actually. Now time for some award picks for MVP. A tough call. I'm going to go with Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills. He was up there for the award last year because the amount of touchdowns he accounted for. But two things went wrong. Lamar Jackson for him. And then just maybe one too many interceptions. I think he plays at a similar level with all those touchdowns, the big, the big plays, the playmaking ability. I think he cuts down on those interceptions. But doing all that... 
while they're kind of being doubted because he doesn't have Stefan Diggs anymore, I think it makes makes it that much sweeter and he wins the most valuable player of the year award. Offensive player of the year, I'm going with CD Lamb. He legit got better last year. His knowledge but as a player on the field as well, beating coverages, whether it's man, any type of zone, home run hitter down the field, after the catch, underneath, you name it. He is the Dallas Cowboys. He is the guy for that offense, and he's going to play like it this year and win the Offensive Player of the Year, in my opinion. My Defensive Player of the Year pick is going to be a guy that should have got a little more love for that award last year. It's going to be Raiders pass rusher Max Crosby for a guy that gets... That many sacks, he sure is involved in, in every single play, racking up tackles. Just the most important player on that defense, obviously. By the way, I think he's going to get more sacks this year. But just how involved he is in every single play, how much of an impact, how much of a problem he is, I, I think everyone realizes he's great. But I think he deserves a little bit more love and should be considered for that defensive player of the year for the well-rounded player that he is. For Offensive Rookie of the Year, I'm going to go with the first overall pick in Caleb Williams. Really, what he has to do is just go out there and play solid. I think he's going to do more than that, but if he goes out there and plays just well and proves that, hey, the Bears may just have a quarterback finally, that alone could do it. But again, I think he does a lot more than that through the air with his legs, being a presence, a tough guy to play against, game plan for, deal with, play to play, and just elevate the Chicago Bears. I think that'll do it, even though there's a lot of good options, a lot of explosive, very good options for Offensive Rookie of the Year. For Defensive Rookie of the Year, I'm going to go with Minnesota Vikings pass rusher Dallas Turner. I think he's going to rack up a bunch of production getting after quarterback, but because he can drop in coverage and will be asked to do so, maybe he gets his hands on the ball a bit as well, but should fit in really nicely in, in Brian Flores' defense. They're going to blitz. It's going to open things up for him. Grenard on the other side will open things up for him as well. I think he'll be highly productive and win Defensive Rookie of the Year, but another category another award with some really good options out there coach of the year i'm gonna go matt lafleur of the green bay packers i back and forth between lafleur and raheem morris of the falcons back and forth but i think the packers have a, have a chance to be one of the very best teams in football and showing where they got to from last year the progression uh, you know where jordan loves getting to i think that's really gonna stand out for lafleur and, and why he could win uh, coach of the year and I do think he's actually one of the better coaches in all of football and I think people start realizing that this year comeback player of the year I got to go Aaron Rodgers tearing his Achilles and coming back and leading the Jets to a very good season long as long as he's healthy I, again I think the Jets will have a very solid season could win some playoff games maybe more Tough, tough call, though, because Kirk Cousins also tore his Achilles and actually a little more recent than Aaron Rodgers, and the Falcons could have a monster season. And then you could talk about Joe Burrow as well coming back from injury, and the Bengals could have a really good season. So this is actually a tough decision, but Aaron Rodgers at his age and what he possibly could do with the Jets, I'm predicting he will win the award as long as he stays healthy. Breakout player of the year. I'm deciding between a couple guys from the same team, and I also thought about Dalton Kincaid as well, but a couple guys – from the same team, and I'm going to go at Atlanta Falcons receiver Drake London. He stepped up a little bit last year, but you're still wanting a little bit more in the production column. I think he does that this year. Uh, he's an absolute stud, and Kirk Cousins is going to help him show that, and he's going to make a big leap this year. But thought about B. John Robinson as well. Like I said, Dalton Kincaid, I think he'll lead the Buffalo Bills in receiving yards, so uh, I thought that was a good option as well. And there you have it for all my predictions. You can play along in the comments. Comment with your predictions for all these or some of them, your Super Bowl picks, whatever you're feeling. Our content, in-season content, is about to start. Power rankings, weekly picks, picks against the spread, locks, and a lot more so join us like subscribe turn notifications on you don't want to miss any of that but that'll do it for this one thanks everyone for watching goodbye